Hello and welcome to our last Bible study in dealing with the study on prayer. We're in Lesson 13. And uh, from here, we're going to move to a study on 1 Peter, which is going to be a good study. Haven't really looked at it much outside of just knowing the Scripture verses. But um, thank you for being with me today. I'm Larry Lorman, Minister of Education at Ash Creek Baptist Church. And um, it's been a good week. I hope it has been for you. Uh, we're in 1 John chapter 5, 14, verses 14 and 15. I have referenced this verse in this study. I think it's probably a very important verse. So I'm going to bring in a few other verses as to kind of build some context and introduction to the study today. But uh, the main idea of the lesson is we need to pray according to His will. And the idea is that God has a will. I mean, He really does. God is not going to answer a prayer that's contrary to His will. Uh, he is good, and He wants good for us, and uh, His will only benefits us. So if you're asking for things that go against His will, He's probably not going to grant it. So, anyway, I've got one, two, three, four points as far as introduction today. I've, I think these are very important points. So here's the first very important point, and it's the idea that the, the Lord is good. I think that we need to decide that right now, that He is good. His nature is good. His will is good. His purposes are good. Uh, he's good. Um, you better decide that uh, right now because if you hit a bump in the road in your life where life is difficult, the way you deal with that is going to be determined about what you think about, how good He is, because if things aren't going so good around you, how are you going to deal with that? What are you going to think about him? Okay, I think that we live in a broken world, but his nature is good and he wants good for us. He wants to bless his children. Uh, he's not withholding his blessings from you. Okay, uh, he's he's he is creating an environment around you to be blessed. So, if you're not being blessed, it's not all his fault. Um, there's a scripture verse in Matthew chapter 7 uh, where Jesus says this. He says, Which of you, if your son asks for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will he give him a snake? If you who are evil know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give good gifts to those who ask him? He's good. So I think we need to, to get that very important point. Here's another verse that I think um, we confuse sometimes. It's John 14, 14, where Jesus says, You may ask me for anything in my name, and I will do it. I've had friends who said, Well, if you got enough faith uh, and ask God for a Cadillac, God will give you a Cadillac. And I'm like, Hang on a minute. What if it's his will for you to have a Ford? I don't think that it's bad to have a Cadillac, but I don't think everybody, God wants everybody to have a Cadillac, okay? Um, you know, <laughs> like, you know, if you got enough faith, you know, faith is the thing that determines everything. It's all based on your faith. If you have enough faith, the you know anything you ask will be given. I don't interpret God's word that way. That's just not been my reality. I don't think that's how God works. I don't think that's what He means by that. Okay, I think He means the same thing we've already said. He's not withholding His blessings from you. Here's another important point: we must ask in faith. I do think there is something to faith. Uh, I think you need to know God. And have faith that he can move mountains. Um, one day Jesus was walking with his disciples. And he cursed the fig tree. And the fig tree uh, died. Okay, And the disciples were amazed by that. And Jesus said to, the, to them. It's in Matthew 21, 21. He said, truly I tell you. If you have faith and do not doubt. Not only can you do what was done to the fig tree. But also you can say to this mountain. Go throw yourself into the sea. And it will be done. Uh, if you believe, you will receive whatever you ask in prayer. Now, see, I think that, you know, the 
context of that is, is faith, um, I, I think that he he is saying, ask in faith and believe, but, you know, there are, <laughs> I think there's context to it, okay? Um, there's some mountains that are, that, uh, are very difficult to move, and there may be mountains God wants to move that we prevent him from moving by sinning. Or by people's choice. I mean, free will still kind of plays into the equation, doesn't it? Well, here's the last context uh, point. We live in a broken world. We do. God's perfect will doesn't happen every day. He grieves over that. Um, children get sick. Um, old people die. Jesus grieved at the tomb of Lazarus over uh, death. Um, I think there are things that grieve him, and he doesn't intervene in every wrong in this world. One day he will make it right, but not yet. So we live in a broken world, and people sin, and God allows it for now. Um, I mean, the Bible begins with the fall of man, uh, where Adam and Eve sinned, and then they hid from God. And God said to them, Then the Lord said to the woman, What is this that you have done? Now, he's not asking that because he's clueless and doesn't know what they have done. He knew what they had done, and he knew the consequences of it. And he did not intervene, and it changed their life. It changed the path of, of the world, and their relationship to God, and their relationship to one another. But did God stop it in its tracks and intervene and keep it from happening? No. He created us with the capacity to make decisions. And he allows us to do that. That's part of being human. okay? And we are sinners. And it seems to be part of our nature. But one day God's going to fix that. So this is all kind of context, I think, to this whole discussion about the passage we're going to look at. Now, it's really short. It's amazing. 23 verses last week, two today. <laughs> but they're important too, so let's look at it. I want to say to you too that I did not include any of the introductory material in the book um, because it's, to me, it didn't, didn't articulate what I thought the lesson should be about. Like the study aim. To understand that God does not hear me because of who I am or what I've done, but he will move heaven and earth to honor the name of his son. I think God always hears us. Uh, the quick read was, Effective prayer is praying in faith according to God's will, and you can have confidence that God will answer your prayers. Um, I think God always hears us. Uh, there was a, a famous... Baptist evangelist back when I was a teenager who started a big uproar in the media by implying that God did not hear the prayers of Jews. And his point was that in his view, Jews weren't saved. Okay, And why would God answer the, the prayer of a, of a lost person? And, you know, there's lots of thoughts about God's relationship to the Jews and I have my own opinion, but I'm not going to tell you what that is. But I think God hears everybody's prayer, even lost people. He hears their prayers. And I think he acts according to his will. And I think it's different person to person and circumstance to circumstance. But the point is, God always hears. The point is, does he act? Okay. I think God in his, in his power and wisdom, uh, being God, hears everything and knows everything, okay? The point is, does he, does he act on it, okay? Well, let's look at the first verse. Uh, the book called it Confidence in Approaching God. Now, we don't get it because we're so used to just talking to God, but in the Old Testament mind, God is so holy that uh, who approaches him? I mean, Moses just being in his presence and not really seeing him but being close, came down from the mountain and his, his face was glowing, okay? 
Uh, the Ark of the Covenant couldn't even be touched or they would die. No one can stand to live in the presence of holy God. And so the Old Testament idea is, you know, <laughs> approach God. God is not approachable. Well, um, we read that and we don't really get it. Well, the, the point is that we as believers through the blood of Jesus can approach God. Well, let's read the passage. Here's the verse. It's uh, 1 John 5, 14. This is the confidence we have in approaching God. So we as believers, the children of God, can do that. If we ask according to his will, he hears us. Now, his will. Um, wow. What is his will? <laughs> do you know his will? I think I know his will on a lot of things. I, I'm, I read his word. I pray. Um, I um, have the Spirit, and so I don't know His will about everything, but I know His will about some things because He's taught us that in His Word. And so, um, it says, we have confidence in approaching God that if we ask according to His will, He hears us. And I think what it means is He hears us, and He, if it is His will, He's going to grant it. And part of what we've discussed is, you know, God always answers prayer. Yes, no, or wait. Uh, if it's his will, he's going to grant it. Um, if we ask in his will, knowing there's certain... And I think part of it is there's things you shouldn't ask for. Okay? There's certain things that are morally wrong. Um, why would you ask God for something that's morally, ethically wrong, that goes against the teachings of Scripture? I think if it's neutral, um, God has a will, He has a path, so uh, he, he will act on that. He's not going to just withhold His blessing because He can. He wants to bless us. That's what we talked about in the introductory material. So, I think... He hears us, but I think it's implied that he does it, okay? He does things that we ask for. He grants our prayers, okay? Um, he wants to, to answer yes to our prayers. Well, the second verse, uh, he hears us. We know that if he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have what we've asked of him. Um, you know... His will is is always good and beneficial, and it's a blessing. Um, his will revolves around what he's doing uh, with people, and um, it's 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 moving forward in a positive way, blessing people. And so, if you're asking God for things that are a blessing to you and other people, uh, he wants to grant those things. Now, you know, like asking for money. <laughs> Money's irrelevant to God in a lot of ways. I mean, if it's used in a way to bless other people and to further his kingdom, then I think that he's involved in that. But if it's, if I'm asking for money to just to benefit me, uh, in some personal way, mm, maybe not. Um, maybe if I'm asking for money to help pay for my kids' college, um, where they will be able to be self-sufficient and function in this world and be a blessing to others, then maybe God will answer that prayer. Do you, do you see the difference? Okay? If I'm asking for money to uh, buy a Cadillac where I'll be just fine driving a Ford, then maybe he won't give me the money to buy the Cadillac. You see where I'm coming from? Okay. Well, um, let's talk about truths. Got three truths as we tie up this whole teaching on prayer and, um, and move forward. First thing is, the Lord always hears the prayers of his children. 
You know, if my kids call me 24 hours a day, if my wife calls me, I'm going to answer the phone. You know what? If I'm in staff meeting or um, I'm doing something, if my kids call, I'm going to answer. Sorry. You know, um, I know there's times that I've got to um, be at work and do my job. But, you know, if I fail at home as a father, I fail at church. And so, my kids call, I'm going to answer. Now, they know to use discretion, and when they call me, I'm trying to teach them that. But it, the same is with the Lord. When we pray, He always hears the prayers of, of His children. Second truth is, our God stands ready to bless us, His children. He's not withholding His blessings from us. I hope you get that. Um... He wants to bless you. He wants to answer your prayer. He wants to say yes. Ask for the right things, though. Ask according to his will. That's really the point of the lesson. Third thing is that we have enough information through reading the Word and through the indwelling of the Holy Spirit to know his will and ask accordingly. So I want to encourage you. Get into his word. Understand his will. And then, um, through the power of the Spirit, ask for things in prayer that you know are his will. And he will grant them. Let's pray together. Jesus, we love you. We love each other. I thank you for this study on prayer. You've challenged me and you've expanded my understanding and my commitment to prayer. I thank you that we can speak to you every day and every moment. And you hear us. And um, help us to not just ask for things. Help us to adore you, to confess our sins, and to thank you for everything you've done for us. In your name I pray. Amen. God bless you. You have a great week. I will see you next week as we get into First Peter, one of my favorite books. Take care. Bye.